Guys, I'm on a mission. A mission to see the newest habitat here at Zoo Knoxville. I wonder what it could be. You may remember this place. This is the Ark. We covered amphibians and reptiles a couple episodes ago. What's next? Otters at Clayton Otter Creek. To date on the wildlife, it's all about my favorite animal, otters. They may not be endangered, but they're part of something bigger than us all. Let's dive in. Excuse me, sir, can I help you? Yes, I'm on a mission of otter importance. I'm looking for the otter expert, Susan. Do you know who that is? That's me. Perfect, I'm in the right place. Susan, I need your help. I wanna know all about otters. Well, let's go. Let's go. We're on a mission and there's no time to dive. So let's slide into a few facts about these aquatic creatures. Their habitats can be in a wide range of places across North America. They can hold their breath for a long time and their ears and nostrils close while underwater. They love attention, which is why they love seeing people outside of their habitat. They're also very vocal, snorting, chuffing, and growling their way through life. Snortle! Snortle! Otter! <laughs> now that you know a little bit about their background, let's go check out their digs. Hi! Oh my gosh, Susan, look at these guys! Who do we have here? So we have Pascal. Clayton and Reed. Oh my gosh, what are their personalities like? Uh, they're actually got pretty distinct personalities from each other. Pascal is our brave one. Okay. Uh, he's actually the first to adventure out into places. Uh, Clayton is our peacemaker. Uh, so he likes to make sure everybody's okay and uh -huh. everybody's doing fine and getting along. Uh, and then Reed is our older, wiser, kind of cool kid. Uh, and he's our newest otter. So they, they seem to be getting along just fine. They, are they like best friends? They are mostly best friends. You're gonna see some discussions that they'll have, um, but it's just basically a way the otters test their boundaries. We saw more of that in the beginning when we introduced them. Uh, it kind of sounds like cats. Um, so right. they sort of, they tussle a little bit. It looks kind of scary, but um, yeah, they have to basically tell each other, these are my boundaries. And since they can't talk, that's the way yeah. otters do And what's it, it like, the little, like, like sneezing type thing that they're doing? Uh, it's just sort of a behavior that otters do. They make yeah. a lot of vocalizations. You will hear them from Reed quite a bit. He likes to tell us exactly what's going on in his mind and what he wants to do. Uh, you'll also hear like a really low honk and a low rumble. Okay. Uh, those are actually my two favorite noises. Oh, amazing. Uh huh. And uh -huh. the honk we hear from the boys, we actually heard it when we introduced them. Um, so when we introduced them, they had the mesh between them so we could make sure that they were safe. Yeah. Uh, and one of the first sounds we heard from our two boys that were here first was that low honk. And that was a, hey, how are you doing? We're really excited to see you noise. Amazing. Um, so it's how we knew that we were gonna be good to put them all together. That's great. And so they're all boys for a reason, correct? Yes, they are all boys for a reason. So female otters are solitary and highly territorial. So we do have two female otters here. They have to live separate from each other. Um, the boys can live together in a group as long as there's no girls around. So oh. if they don't have anything to fight about, they don't have any reason to. Um, so we're gonna hold them. Uh, there's a big need for boys to go somewhere if they're not in a breeding situation. Yep. Um, so we have our own bachelor pool here. It's the, it's the bro code, I love it. it yeah, it's, it's definitely, some mornings when I come in, it looks like there's been a frat party. So that's Reed. That is Reed. What is Reed wanting right now? Reed wants to go outside. Can we go see their bachelor pad? We absolutely can. Huh? Let's go check it All out. Right, let's go. These bachelors are the outdoorsy type, so we're in for a treat, exploring their brand new outdoor habitat. Or maybe it's a man cave. Anyways, we're gonna glove up first because, well, you know, poop. This is a really nice habitat, but so Reed was got here last, correct? So he did. He had to quarantine before he was in here, right? He did. Why does he have to quarantine? Uh, he has to quarantine to protect the safety of the other otters because he came from another facility. We wanted to make sure that he was healthy before gotcha. he was introduced. So that means he basically stayed at the clinic. The clinic staff took care of him. Uh, and then they ran a couple tests to make sure, basically fecal tests to check his poop to make sure that everything is clean. So before we introduce him, we know that everybody's gonna be safe. Okay. Well, now we got three healthy otters and now we're going to uh, clean up their poop. Speaking so. of poop. It's kind of gonna be a poop hunt. Okay, a poop hunt, uh -huh. I'm down. We're gonna start going Let's that way. Let's find a poop hunt. Or... 
So otters in the wild would use a latrine, which means they go in one spot. Right. Uh, and it's sort of a way to communicate with each other. But, and they're, but they're naughty here, right? They yeah, really um, they have chosen multiple latrine sites. Uh, so it's sort of wandering through and looking for all of it. But fish eating poop, uh, animals that eat fish, it's a whole different level of uh, interesting. This is only <laughs> one variety. Uh, there are others as well. Um, maybe we'll get to experience those. You're doing maybe great. Maybe we will. Um, we actually have a list on the board. We've been keeping track of where they pooped. So far, they seem to be really fond of this spot. Okay. Uh, and then a spot over there, and then a spot right in front of everyone. How good is it going to be clean? Like, we're going to call that good for you. Okay. I'll cut good you a break. Me. All right. <laughs> Susan, this environment is, is great. Can you, what can you tell me about the design of this place? Oh, I absolutely love it. I, from the first time I walked in, I was just in love with this exhibit. It's built so well for young otters um, and it's very dynamic and complex. So there's lots of different features. There's lots of different um, substrates. So we've got grass, we've got sand, we've got water. We have water of different depths, which is my favorite because Amazing. we've got the shallower pools and then you've got the huge deep pool that we've got down there. Uh, and then the pool itself, just the features that are in it are really complicated as well. Uh, it gives the otters stuff to swim through, uh, which they really like. The boys like to go in the front and play in all of the logs that are at the front right. and the deadfall. Um, it's just, it's so amazing for these guys to have a pool of this size and the complexity in the, in the exhibit. The other thing that people often are surprised about is how much land there actually is. Because if you notice, we're pretty much half grass, half water. Right. And people don't expect that with river otters. Um, but river otters actually spend about half their life on the land and then half their life in the water. It's amazing. They have a lot of variety here. So I'm assuming they go all over the place, all over the exhibit. Um, when we first got the younger boys, Clayton and Pascal, they were just pool boys. They were in gotcha. the pool all the time. When we introduced Reed to them, he had more experience with other substrates and other parts of the exhibit. And so he was like, hey guys, look at the sand. Sand's super cool. And gotcha. that's his favorite spot. Gotcha. He actually looks a little bit like a Cheeto when he gets like covered <laughs> in sand. Um, but he taught the boys how to roll in that. They love the grass. They love to play and wrestle over there. Are and they always just making up new games? Or? It seems like it, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, Is it, it, what's it, their favorite game? Is Tag their favorite or? I always, <laughs> I always say their favorite game is Drown the Otter. <laughs> so when you'll see them, they'll be in the pool and they'll be running around just, and wrestling and just a big ball and everybody wins, nobody loses a It's just water otter. wrestling. Basically. Exactly. Even though otters have fun playing games with each other, we can all use a little enrichment, right? For the otters, that means toys like floaties, frisbees, chew toys, and more. So who wants to help us build a sandcastle? Nice, nice. Oh, nice bounce. <laughs> Well done, like a pro. Let's get these otters out. Susan, they're ready to go play. <laughs> they absolutely How are. do we get them out? All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this handle, Okay. use both hands, pull it down slowly, make sure it hooks, and they'll go right out. Both hands. Yep. All right, let's try it. You ready? You ready, Hunter? Here's a moment of truth. It makes me feel great. <laughs> So they're out now. Can, Great. We, can we go watch them play? It's the best part of being an otter keeper. Hopefully they'll play with a ducky. We'll see. Let's go see. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't ever get tired of seeing this. I just it's don't. beautiful. Yeah, it's amazing. This is incredible. Yeah. Right? I mean, I could literally just post up here and just watch them all day long, which um, I bet you do. I mean, that's pretty much what I do. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what they pay me for, is just to watch the otters all day. Well, let's talk about otters in the wild mm -hmm. and conservation. I mean, how, first of all, how are they doing now? And I heard that they almost went extinct. That is true. Uh, so North American river otters are actually, the population is pretty stable now, but uh, they were locally extinct in a lot of states, including here in the Smoky Mountains. So they wow. were extinct in the Smoky Mountains. Uh, and then in the 1980s, they actually started a reintroduction program. Okay. And that involved um, getting otters from Louisiana, which is overrun with otters, uh, and introducing those into the Smokies. But the other thing they had to do is clean up the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, because if the water's not clean, the otters aren't going to stay, no matter how many you bring in. Um, river otters are an indicator species. So basically, that means that 
if the water is bad or the environment is bad, that animal doesn't live there. So for, for uh -huh. otters, if the river is not good, if the water quality is bad, they're just not going to be there. And that's how you know that there's an issue. They're indicator species. Mm -hmm. And now they're staying in? Absolutely, they are. Okay. Yeah, so in the Smoky Mountains, they've actually stopped the reintroduction and it's a stable population is, is pretty much what they say. They don't have an idea of how many. Mm. But anecdotally, I've worked with otters for 12 years. Uh, and in those 12 years, the number of people who come to me and say, hey, I saw these guys here, I saw them there, has increased exponentially. I'm right. getting like one in three people who've seen river otters in the wild. That's amazing. So, so yeah. the key is clean water. The key is absolutely clean water. This water looks very, very clean. It is, it's very clean. Um, how, how do they keep this water so clean? We have a very complex system in the back, our life support system. Uh, and it's a series of pumps and things that are over my head. Uh, but luckily <laughs> we have very qualified people who actually run our water. Well, can I see it? Absolutely. Let's go check it out. Guys, time out for a second. I know we're on a mission and we're going to go talk about water purity, but I just found out about the existence of an otter poop dance. Otter poop dance, is that a real thing? Then otter poop dance is in fact a real thing. How do you do the otter poop dance? So basically I told you earlier that otters are a latrine animal. And the reason uh -huh. that they're latrine animals is because they want everybody to know where they are in their territory. Sure. So they have scent glands on their feet. They move their feet back and forth. Back it up. They have scent glands on their feet. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they have scent glands. They move them back and forth while they poop. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's the otter poop dance. And you got to wag the butt too, yep, right? Yep. You got to wag the butt. A little butt. Get it. You don't know about my little <laughs> white boy <laughs> Kardashian sure lift, booty. Lift your tail. Okay, all right, what do you think? Very good, good. very good. <laughs> Phew, I'm sweaty now from that poop dance. Let's go see some water. All right, John, I hear you're the water boy. Yeah, that's uh, Mr. Water Boy to you. Oh, Mr. Water Boy, okay, show me around, Mr. Water Sure, boy. right this way, Brad. So, John, this room kind of stresses me out. Right. Walk us through this. What's, what, what's going on here? Sure. So as you walk in, you might be overcome by three large containers and various plumbing pieces all over the room. Um, I'm going to go ahead and break that down for you and make yes, it look please. a little bit easier. Okay. So right here, we've got the two main filters for the large exhibit water outside. We've got filter one and filter two. They're each 1,000 cubic feet. They hold um, seven different layers of media from coarse up to fine at the top, and that acts like a sieve and filters out smaller particles. Gotcha. So these two yellow boxes right here are called flow meters, and they gauge the flow rate for the exhibit water. Uh, each pump is running at about 300 gallons per minute, so 600 gallons total. And that is what drives everything through the filters and then back up top to the top of the waterfall, and everything flows down to the bottom pool from there. I mean, how automated are they? How much do you have to come to? How hands-on um, do you have to be? It needs attention every day. Uh, these will really only be affected every two to three days is when it will need actual attention, whether that be a backwash to clean the filters or adjusting the valve down there right above the pumps. For the filtration in this exhibit, we have mechanical filtration and the two blue filters, and then we have a gas exchange chamber right here with the ozone. It actually works as like a magnet. It attaches itself to viruses, bacteria, or any kind of small particles. And ozone is an oxygen radical, so it will attach to those molecules and actually pop them like a small explosion. And this is happening, this is happening 24 seven on such a minuscule level that you can't see it. Amazing. So basically, let me see if I get this straight. Mm -hmm. So all three of these combined, this is the gas that goes into the water and makes it clean. And this is the filters. Yes. And that's how the water stays nice and clean. Yes. Amazing. Okay. Well, I hear that there's a lever that I get to pull. That's the green lever we're going to pull. What does it do? This green lever right here is the drain valve for the small pool that the otters have in their exhibit. And that is a strictly dump and fill pool, so it gets cleaned out every day. All right, I'm ready to pull it if, if you think it's time. We're ready. All right, let's switch spots. Let's see how hard this is gonna be. Natural. 
To recap, what happens here is the water gets sorted into these three large filtration containers. These containers use both physical and ozone filtration system. Every two to three days, it gets tested and treated. When the green lever gets pulled, it dumps out the old water from the otter's pool, filling it with new clean water. Well, Susan, I can't thank you enough. What an amazing day this has been. I've learned, have you. I've learned so much, <laughs> but I've collected a bunch of questions that people ask us online. Okay. Do they interact with people when they're being watched? They love the glass. They love um, the glass. We've noticed they like to, they actually, people ask, can you, can they see us? And they absolutely can. Uh, otters actually have better vision underwater than they do above water. Interesting. Um, so they have a nictitating membrane that protects their eyes, but it's also like built in glasses. Uh, so they have perfect vision underwater and they can see out of the glass. They can see people. Uh, they like to see strollers. They like the wheels on strollers. They like toes. They like bare feet. They love feet. toes. Yes. Any colors that they like? Uh, they've seen to like bright colors. So we've seen a lot of reaction to reds and hot pinks. Well, there you go. If you want the otters to interact with you, wear a nice hot pink shirt. <laughs> what temperature is this water? People ask us that all the time because they swim all the time. It's the temperature that it comes out of the hose, essentially. Ah. So ambient temperature, they um, are North American river otters. So they are all throughout the country. So they can handle any temperatures that we have. And they actually like cold weather. They like cold water. They love snow. Gotcha. So. What can we do to help with the conservation of otters. And what do we do when we see one in the wild? Okay, so the first thing you do if you see one in the wild, be so grateful that you actually saw one in the wild right. because they are still fairly rare. There's also a program called Otter Spotter so you can report that you have seen an otter so then other people can go see it. Also, most importantly, keep your distance. Admire them from afar. Mm -hmm. uh, and then as far as helping to conserve otters, water pollution is the biggest concern for them. And so the best way to do that is to recycle and beyond recycling is to reduce the amount of plastics you use. So reusable right. water bottles is the best way, the easiest way, the simplest way that people can do right now. Amazing, so how does somebody become an otter spotter? There's actually a website. Uh, so if you search otter spotter on Google, it will pop up and there's actually one locally with the Tremont Institute. And so you just basically tell them where you saw the otter. Amazing, and what's the zoo policy about the wildlife host jumping in the water with the otters right now. What's your policy on being bitten? <laughs> I'm fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> I would not recommend it. All These right. guys play really rough with each other and they're not going to know the difference. All right, I understand. I get it. Well, uh, I can't thank you enough for this fantastic, magical day with a bunch of playful otters. Thank I was you so, so much. so happy to share them with you. Awesome. Well, guys, I had a magical day at Zoo Knoxville, hanging out with the otters, playing with the otters. Uh, I live here now, I'm never going to leave, I'm just going to watch them play all day long. They're going to have to kick me out. But if you like animals and otters as much as I do, please give us a follow, give us a like, give us a share, comment, tell us what animal you want to see next. As always, I'm Brad and this is The Wildlife. At the end of it, can I just scream, hey man, get off those rocks! <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? What are you doing here? Who do you know? <laughs> Who let you up there? <laughs> You Otter No by Alanis Morissette. I like that one. <laughs> you Otter No. Hello from the Otter Slide. That's perfect. And I'm here I know. I know. to remind you.